Forest Solicitors. We are live right now on the Pure West Radio Facebook page. You can watch there as well as listening in all the usual places. And on the agenda tonight, we'll round up all of the local football action after a busy Saturday of Division 1 and FAW trophy matches and some good local rugby as well with both Narbeth and Tembi maintaining their 100% records. Our guest tonight will be Heather Warner, a brilliant local athlete who famously swaps long distance running for competitive race walking and this year backed up her Commonwealth Games success in 2022 by being crowned British champion over the 5,000 metres distance. Heather was recognised with the Lifetime Achievement Prize at the Pembrokeshire Sports Awards and we'll be talking to her about that, about her retirement as well and about her phenomenal success during her career and we'll have a rundown on all of the other winners from Friday's Folly Farm Showcase and of course we'll pick up on the best of the rest from the weekend's action. So glad to have your company, nice to have you with us in the studio in Haverford West, Tom Dyer, Fraser Watson, Gordon Thomas. Evening to you all. Uh, Fraser, first up, how are you? Not too bad, Ben. Uh... Slightly despondent after Swansea threw away a two-goal lead at home on Saturday, but um, been there before. But no, on the whole, good. Cold, mind. Yeah, it's, it's definitely gone chilly, hasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it, it has. And some brave park runners up bright and early on Saturday morning because it's been a, a chilly old weekend. Gord, how are you? I'm very good, Ben. Excellent stuff. And Tom, yourself? I'm very well, thank you. Excited for another <laughs> Monday evening. Excellent. Well, it's good to have your company. Let's see how, how we spent our sporting weekends and we'll, we'll we'll kick off with local football. Gordon, where, where were you this weekend? I actually went to uh, the athletic ground, uh, near Nayland Hub, the cricket ground as well, you know, the, <laughs> the hub of all sports in Pembrokeshire. <laughs> uh, and uh, Moncton were playing uh, against Nayland. And uh, while I was there, Dylan Davis gave uh, Moncton uh, an early lead. Uh, and then I popped uh, to Merlin's Bridge, who play in uh, the, the 4G pitch in uh, Prendigas, Haverford West High School, as they uh, call it now. Uh, and the bridge won 1 0 against Milford United. But uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the football and uh, Haken and Keiru, which we were talking about last week. It was another classic. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Nin yeah, go on, Fraze. 95th minute win, wasn't it? For, mm -hmm. for Haken. Mm. How, how, was yeah, we how was your weekend, Fraze? Not so bad, Ben. Yeah, unfortunately, Swansea spoiled it. Um, Stephen, actually, Pele has just pointed out good signing by Swansea made today. That's right, Yannick Velassi. I wasn't expecting that, mm. but threw away a 2 0 lead at Hull, which was just poor, really. It was a game that we, we could have done with winning. It's like worried now over the next few weeks after having that initial rise. We seem to have dipped back again. But uh, no, apart from that, I've uh, been in a bit of training because I'm walking Penavan on Saturday. So I was out today. Get <laughs> Getting used to the temperature and the cold weather. Wow! Yeah, you, you're you're doing that this weekend, aren't you? I'm how, doing how, it next Saturday. I'll be taking a pair of gloves with me. How are you feeling for that phrase? I'll be all right. I think I'll be yeah. okay. I'll <laughs> gonna get some tips off Gordon now because I know he's conquered it before. Oh, good stuff. Yeah, right. I've actually done Penny Van. Yeah, you're right, phrase. <laughs> That's on my list. And you're you're, you're doing it for a stag do phrase. Is is that right? The 40th birthday. Oh, okay, 40th birthday. Yeah. Oh, that's a good way yeah. to mark it. Um, let, let's talk about the local football, um, though, shall we? And, and Gordon mentioned uh, Merlin's Bridge 1, Milford 0, uh, Carew 2, Haken 3, uh, Nayland 1, Monkton Swifts 1, Penner 1, Tenby 2. Uh, wins as well uh, for Goodick uh, in the FAW Trophy and Kilgetty in the West Wales Cup. Mm. Uh, what were the highlights, Fraser, then, of the, of the weekend's football? Well, I mean, I thought the game Gordon went to, I thought it was Perhaps another important one for Nade, and that's two home games now where they've only drawn. And you do feel they're going to have to start picking up wins to, to come out of it. And I thought that might be one they targeted, actually. Mm. But um, good, good, good win for Goodick to go up there in the FAW Trophy and you know, whether and win an artificial surface, I believe, actually a four G pitch. In yeah, it, it was more moved last minute. Yeah, right? it was supposed to be a two o'clock kickoff, but they moved it to four o'clock and that's moved right. it to a different ground. Mm. They went to Flan Rumney. So to have that disruption and come through, that's a great win for them on the road. And of course, as Gordon mentioned, vital win for Haken. You're looking at it; it was two all deep into injury time. You thought is that going to be the day where? They might lose a title race. It goes to four points then, and, and they just keep themselves in it. it it's they've become so good at, at getting those late goals over the years. You know, Skinny's had a few himself, and now his team are doing it. So Jay Power, I think, in ninety fifth, ninety sixth minute. So yeah. you know, there's going to be a lot of twists and turns to go. Yep, but that could yep be looked back on as a pivotal day. Yeah, well, it's partaking two points ahead in mm -hmm. the, the title race because Goodick were playing in the That's cup. right with a game in hand. But, yeah, I mean. 
Kiru must be kicking themselves again. You know, I hope if the boys are listening, I mean, to concede late goals mm. in crucial games, uh, it's happened time and time again. Mm. I don't know why that's happening. And remarkably, um, they're still in the relegation picture. You know, they you're, are. You're talking the team going toe to toe with Heaton on Saturday. Can't yeah. believe you could say, I've got no doubt they'll get out of it. But yeah, we believe that. Yeah. You know, there's a lot more. They're going to win a lot more games against yeah. guys that are in the you know the the bottom half of the table but why are they there as well false that's position. another question Dream mark over position. yeah mm. yeah some game for the neutral that one though wasn't it game of five goals Haken winning it late mm. on that that was some entertainment there at Carew, wasn't it yeah and and it, it it's shown time and time again i know it's a cliche it's never over against Haken. <laughs> <laughs> never is you know the size was so many late goals over the years but yeah it was you know, it was an important game and it lived up the billing as well. And like Gordon said, they'll be sick down in Cairo, I think. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, you know, they've got to pick themselves up quickly. And and now we got this weekend, let's look ahead. We've got Goodick versus uh, Haken United mm-hmm. down in Haken uh, in the Cup. So uh, that's the West Wales Cup. That's going to be a, quiet, a, a, an interesting game. The last <laughs> time they met, it was four all, three sent off. Um, so it'll be yeah. uh, another, you know, Big game at the Orbs on uh, mm. Saturday. And, uh, you know, Haken a due a win against Goodick. Goodick won't like me saying that, but they are due a win and a bit of luck against Goodick. Will it be this Saturday? Some classic I know West Crystal Wales Sullivan classic. will say there's no chance that's <laughs> going to happen, but you just never know in a cup game. There's some yeah, classic West Wales Cup clashes as well, haven't they? Oh, they have. Yeah. They have. That's a, it'll, be, it'll be a feisty one, won't it? Are, are yeah. the, any of the three of you going to make a prediction for that one? The most important thing is to keep you cool in those games. Mm. They, they are going to be Save feisty, but you need to keep cool while playing hard as well. Yeah. You know, you're just getting yeah. that balance. Yeah. Two, but it's, two red cards would be my prediction. <laughs> <laughs> two red cards, okay. <laughs> yeah. be, have a quite tame phrase in comparison. Yeah. It would be, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like Gordon said. Yeah. They probably learned to keep composure and head a little more this time. You think? So, okay, yeah. um, so that was the that was the the Division One action mentioned as well. Wins for for Goodick and Kilgetty in in the cup. Uh, no game for have for West County this weekend, uh, but they are back in action tomorrow, aren't they? On the Oggy Bridge Meadows Stadium, and a, another big game really, and a, a tough game against mm-hmm. Cardiff Met Uni. Um, Tom, we're there. Pure West Radio are going to be there, aren't we, tomorrow? Yeah, we're going to be there providing some pre-match entertainment and um, providing a little bit of uh, ad hoc commentary, as it were, in a bit of the halftime as well to, to get the boys psyched up for almost going to be a freezing cold evening. <laughs> yeah, it, it will be. It's going to be bitterly cold tomorrow. And it actually, Gord, it's the first of two quite tough games for, for the Bluebirds. Two tough tests, yeah? Yeah, definitely. You know, Cardiff Met are riding quite high in the Premier. I believe they're fourth at the moment. So, uh, you know, they're, they're never an easy game against them. But Halford West got a few boys back. They're capable of beating them on uh, on their day. Let's hope it is their day tomorrow night. Uh, and then they just got the the league leaders, TNS, mm-hmm. to, to take on <laughs> Meadow on Saturday. Yes. You know... Potentially, it could be six points loss come Saturday. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Tony Pennock is a, a target in at least three points. If they got four points out of those two games, that would be really good. But, mm. you know, the TNS one's going to be a difficult one. And obviously tomorrow night against Cardiff Met, and then they play him in the Cup then the following week. Yeah. I didn't well, realise... Because- I didn't realise that the win against Connors Key was the first time Tony Pennox had a win against the top six side since he's been there. So it's uh, he, he kept that, that quiet. You've been talking to him lately, then. Have you? <laughs> if, if you missed it, you can catch up with my conversation mm-hmm. after nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah, it's a stat that's going to improve, actually. Mind. Yeah, yeah, that is. That yeah, that is. Yeah, but then yeah. he went through. He went through the list earlier. In the last eight, they've won four drawn two, lost two. So they're they're, they're going in the right direction. It'll be interesting because mm-hmm. they say kind of met a flying high. Yes, absolutely. And actually, just to say as well, if you, if you go to the game tomorrow and buy a ticket, you're eligible then for free entry uh, for the cup match with Cardiff Met on Saturday, the 9th of December. They're giving out tokens, I think 200 on the gate tomorrow. Uh, so get yourself along and support them. And uh, Actually, a decent run of form. And also, uh, You Can Have It All is, is back on. Episode two came out on Thursday. I fully recommend that. We had Ryan on the show, didn't we, a couple of weeks ago? Was it last, last yeah. week or the week before? I know I wasn't here for the, the one he was on, but I've caught up with the first two episodes. And it's such a good insight into what what playing in Europe was like for Haverford West. Um, Some really good stuff from Tony Pennock as well. You see what what a good manager he actually is in terms of the level he's managed at. Um, But just some interesting things that they had to do, um, registering kit colours and what 
what bibs the players were going to wear on the bench and all stuff that the UEFA delegate had to tick off before the game it was quite interesting. So have a look at that. The first two episodes are out as well. Um, we'll change the shape of the ball for just a sec um, and talk local rugby. Um, up and running, of course. And, and Fraser, Narbeth and Tembi uh, mm. maintained 100% records, didn't they? Which is which is good as we, well, we're now the end of November. Yeah, absolutely. Narbeth, I think, 6-6 six six, now in that, that Championship West League. I thought straight away when they regionalised that league, they'd be high up there. I think it's only them and Brecon currently unbeaten. It's yeah. looking early doors like those who be fighting out for the title. And Tembi, yeah, I'm not surprised by Tembi. They did build well last year. They were close to promotion. They've had something building there for a couple of years now under Jonathan Evans. And I'm not surprised that the, the players who have come through are now a little bit older, more experienced. And they're winning games too. And they look a good bet to go up this year as well. St. Clair's also doing well, actually currently top of Division 2, played more games than Tembi. Um, and then a couple of, you know, a big win for Fishguard, obviously 16-14 at uh, home to Lucha. They, yeah, uh, they ground win. out the moors. Yeah, Milford, Milford Haven just struggling a little bit at the moment. Did get a bonus point on the road, but it was already another match. I'll be targeting winning. They're hovering quite dangerously at the moment. Crimmick as well, a narrow win, didn't they? Yeah. Was that, that was against Dunvant, wasn't it? They they won 19-17. Yeah. They're Absolutely. fighting hard, aren't they? Yeah. Absolutely. They, be, they look like they're going to be fine in that league. Then he came up last year and they're right at home there. You know, and I'll obviously mention yeah. my boys as well. 50 yeah. points in Santa Brother for the Saints. Three yeah. wins in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you've got to give credit to Crimmick yeah. coming yeah. up to that 100%. division. It, it's, a, it, it's a big standard, that is, uh, Ben, you know, the championship. Mm. And for them to be playing in Division 1 for quite a few seasons and mm. step up to step up to you know that level yeah. and they've done well they're more than holding their own mm -hmm. and uh, yes some of the games have been close but they've been winning them as well you know just edging mm -hmm. it especially at home as well so well done to them let's hope that continues as well for Krimer. yeah interesting development as well and in three west a pembroke not able to raise a side again to play half of the west and when they came down those two leagues the concern was they then just romped Division 3 West yeah. 8. It's actually gone the other way. Me and Gord have seen this a lot of times before. Boys have run to the hills and the going's got tough. I was surprised by that, but they're struggling at the moment. Yeah, mm. it's a shame to see that as well, mm. Fraser. You don't like to see no. any club struggling no. for numbers, you know. And uh, Pembroke coming from Division 1 down to mm. Division 3 A West was trying to consolidate, mm. you know, and they, they are actually struggling to get numbers, which is a great shame of, you know, they, they've got a lot of history, that club as well, you know, it'll, it would be a shame if it really did uh, go, uh, I think, you they know, I think they'll be okay. Yeah. They'll be okay. They'll sort it out. There's enough uh, yeah. old heads there to sort it out. I was going to okay. say the phrase, was, was Rob Evans justified in his comments though? <laughs> Cardigan coach. Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> Beating Langham 81-7, maybe he was, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're going well, though. They'll, they'll be right up there, Cardigan. How close losing at Abra on the yeah. actually opened the door for them a bit. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good division. It's a four way now, battle it? now. It's mm. a good division. Mm. Yeah. Okay, um, we are going to talk about the Sport Pembroke Awards before nine as well, because we're, we're, we're first up going to be joined by Heather Warner, who picked up the Lifetime Achievement Awards. Uh, and then um, and, and Tom will help us out in the final part, because I know Tom was, was part of the Pure West team that were there on Friday. So we'll run through some of the, the winners. I also noticed, I don't know if you can put the message back on the screen or not, Tom, but there was a message from Ridgian about the uh, short map bowls. Just a reminder. There we go. Evening, guys. Very good, Tom, that was. Uh, evening, guys. A bit of a cheeky reminder of the British top team team challenge at Heatherton at the weekend. We, we spoke to Ridgin, didn't we, a few weeks mm -hmm. ago. Uh, this is this is the, well, it's the World Cup of short map. Well, the the, the UK Cup, isn't it, of yeah. short map? Yeah. 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 Um, but that's going to be a top weekend at Heatherton, isn't it? Definitely Saturday yeah. and Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, so get yourself along to that. And good luck to the Wales team uh, competing in that. Um, we'll come back for part two. Heather's going to join us. We'll find out what it was like to uh, win the Lifetime Achievement Awards on Friday night at Folly Farm in just a few moments. Don't forget, you can get involved with the show as well tonight. Uh, leave us a message. We'll read some of those out as we go through. It's Monday evening. Good to be with you tonight, right here on Pure West Sport. Ethan Evans and Morris Solicitors.